Previously in the Brotherverse. Sage sent us to find you guys. We've been trying to infiltrate this area for, for months. We were captured. You must be the three troublemakers. And he throws his cloak to the ground. And I go down. I am down. down. Just give up now. You can see that we have bested you. And you just see him hold his fists together. You see the world go dark. So do we just erase the podcast? <laughs> yeah. You're not Take dead. You're all internet. just unconscious. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and you recognize yourself to be in the jail cell that you saved Shale from. Let's get into it. Okay, so you guys uh, succumbed to uh, being unconscious via block. (laughs) Succame. Is that actually what it is? No, it's not. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Like, all right. But yeah, at at Vlog's hand, um, and you wake up. Uh, So you guys do feel like you had a long rest. You're you're unaware of how much time has passed since you uh, fell unconscious. Twenty more years. (laughs) Twenty more years. (laughs) You've been in a coma. Now Donald Trump is president and there's coronavirus. God, God. <laughs> Let's go back. Yeah. Yeah, you can cut that out. Um, <laughs> we can't. Yeah. <laughs> we can't. There's no we, cutting that out. <laughs> uh, so you, you look around your jail cell, and it's about 20 feet by 20 feet. There's some bedrolls in the corner. There's a little hole in the back on the ground that you assume is a little, a little toilet or something. Oh, I thought you meant a mouse hole. No. No. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. For mouse jail. Yeah. yeah. I or guess we're bucket. going to poop land. <laughs> <laughs> poop people are the best people. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Uh, and then... Basically, you have three walls of stone around you, and then the front side is the bars, uh, so you can't see into the jail cells next to you. But that is where you find yourself right now. But we can see the cells across the way? Uh, All the cells are on the same side of the wall, so it's basically like six cells uh, running lengthwise down this room. Hmm. Okay. Well, at least the cell's pretty roomy. Yeah, I'm surprised they put us all in the same cell. Yeah. Did we keep our Didn't clothes? Seem like... Uh, <laughs> you're wearing very basic clothing, like... Like ska clothing? Know, like ska clothing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a basic... reference no one will get. Actually, if yeah. people listen, well, play D&D, they might. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I is that a reference to the, the book that you're reading, or...? Yeah, Eric, you don't get that reference? Oh, when you said ska, I thought you meant, like, music. I, I thought you like, meant You mean, like, a, like a pork pie hat? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an obscure <laughs> fantasy reference to the Mistborn series. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought maybe that's where you're going, but it's like, I definitely thought ska music person. Like, yeah. that'd be really funny if you were <laughs> ska. Like like the, that's not basic at all. <laughs> yeah. You hear trumpets and upbeat music in the distance. Trump <laughs> mighty, <laughs> mighty boss tones. <laughs> yeah. Over the... They also got captured. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, it's just like it. it, They kind of look like nightgowns. It's just like burlap sacks. Yeah. So kind of like Scott clothing. Yes. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) Deep fantasy cuts. (laughs) I, I can't believe that we lost. I thought we had him. Yeah. I'm feeling pretty helpless now, guys. This is exactly what happened to Shale and Traitor. Yeah. And as you guys are talking, you hear from the adjacent cell, like, 
Are you guys finally awake? Who's that? It's Shale. Hans is here too. <sighs> yeah, we're awake. Hans. Hans, we could have used some help back there. You don't hear uh, Hans respond. Like, <sighs> Shale Class- says. Classic Hans. Shale <laughs> says he's not. Uh, he's not speaking right now. I feel like he's probably feeling a lot of shame right now. He's just laying in the corner. Oh, well, now I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> so has anything happened while we've been knocked out? I'm not. I've not really. We were brought down here. There's been some guards that have come and checked on you. I only woke up maybe an hour ago. It's, it's hard to say how much time has passed. Um, Hans has been up for a bit longer. But we're just trying to figure out what to do right now. It sounds like Hans may have given away a lot of information to the Guardians, to the Rectrons. So we need to figure out how to get out of here so we can warn the Rebellion, warn the Keepers. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, you've been here longer than us. Uh, (coughs) Any ideas? It's dusty in here. (laughs) Bless you. May the light be with you. (laughs) Also with you. Yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, I know you guys have been stuck here for a long time and obviously you weren't able to break out on your own, but any ideas on how we might be able to get out of here? All, all I know is that all the cells are controlled by electronic locks. Uh, what you guys were able to do before you took one of the key cards and were able to let, let us out. But without the key cards, I'm not sure how we can deactivate these, these locks and open the bars uh, but yeah, we've, I've been sitting here looking around, but without any weapons or any ability to use magic, I'm really at a loss and she, she trails off. And at that moment you hear a giant siren go off and you hear someone come over the intercom and they say, men prepare your battle station at the gates, prepare your battle stations at the gates. And the, uh, the siren continues for another few minutes, and you hear some shuffling outside. Uh, and the siren turns off, and there's silence again. Sounds like someone's going to get us. Yeah, I'm wondering if the keepers just are going full force, coming to get all of us. And uh, you hear Shale pipe up, and she says, No, that's a... That's a, a warning for um, monsters that are attacking from inside the mountain. I don't know if you saw, but when you first entered the mine area, there's a a large cavern that burrows deeper into the mountain and has sort of a, a magical gate in front of it. Uh, when the mining facility was first created, there were existing tunnels that burrowed into the mountain, and there's some very large and ferocious creatures that live in there uh, to prevent them from coming and hurting the city and the mining facility. They put up these magical gates that are controlled by light crystals, uh, basically wall of forces that are barriers to prevent the monsters from coming in. Occasionally they get close though, and we, the Rectrons have to be on call in case the barriers fail. Hmm. So are we puff? You can't do any magic right now. You don't have their, your thing, whatever it is? Uh, yeah, I believe that's correct. I was just wondering how big that toilet is. Toilet hole. You want me to I'll, go You want me to go in I'll, there? How big is the toilet <laughs> hole? Or, or shrink shrink one of us. <laughs> Puff seems like an octopus. You can probably just squeeze into small spaces. <laughs> I can only make you half size. I don't think that's <laughs> small enough to go down well, the for, toilet Maybe hole. for Henry. I don't know. Not for me. Maybe. <laughs> you think I'm only... Two poos big? (laughs) (laughs) For me, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not asking about putting someone in there. I'm wondering if I'm capable of using this toilet hole. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what creatures they're holding in here, but that toilet's way too small. (laughs) You need me to shrink your poo? Or (laughs) you need me to shrink your poo? (laughs) Yep. (laughs) For all of our sake. (laughs) (laughs) 
This is torture. <laughs> but for real, how big's the toilet hole? It's like six inches in diameter. Mm. Yep. So it's, it's a latrine. <laughs> Uh, I guess, yeah, can we investigate, like, the rest of the room, look a little more closely and see if there's any other opportunities? <laughs> Are there any air vents or posters where someone has pre-dug a <laughs> hole behind it? <laughs> <laughs> I want a, a rock hammer. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a poster that says hang in there, and it's a tabaxi hanging from a, a tree limb <laughs> over in the corner. <laughs> Uh, so you look around, um, there's some cracks in the stone near the floor. The floor is just covered in, in straw and it's stone as well. Uh, you look out into the main room from the bars and way down the far left side, you see a giant, what looks like a storage container or like lockers, I would say. Uh, but other than that, nothing is very distinct that you see. Okay. Um, if we look out there, are there are there also? I mean, this might just be the lockers, I guess. But are there any um, like cloaks hanging on the wall, or like do people leave anything behind in this area? I guess that'd probably be the lockers. You know, like right? keys on hooks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can grab with a. There's a dog pole. with a key ring in its mouth, and you have one steak or one bone in your uh, yeah prison. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Um. But uh, as you guys are sitting in silence, you hear Shale pipe up again, and she says, I feel like in case something happens to me, I should relay some more information to you, just so Hans and I aren't the only holders of the, the knowledge that we've gained while infiltrating this facility. But Lord Arthgard, his flying ship army, I think, is near complete and ready to be deployed, and I assume that he's going to be going out and looking for the other talismans. Uh, he's also been going out and sending Rectrons and other Guardians around the world to capture mages and seers to try and help him locate the remaining talismans, the talismans of thunder and time, by having the seers search with their minds across the land. So we're we're afraid that he's gaining a lot of power very quickly. And like I mentioned to you before, there's he seems to be working on some flying fortress. I think it's being constructed in that room that's adjacent to Vlog's control room. Um, but it's hard to get information about that, and I haven't seen it myself. But the big thing is going to be trying to figure out how to disable that fortress. That seems like it's going to be a huge issue if it actually takes off and starts roaming the world. Well, yeah, that sounds pretty bad. Uh, so I don't know if you've heard. Do you, do you know who we are? Are, have you? We're kind of a big deal in the keepers, but you guys have been locked <laughs> up for a while. <laughs> I had, we've we haven't had much outside contact. It's more sending messages out than receiving messages inside the city of Vanguard. Uh, we've been here for for weeks though, so no, I'm not I'm not familiar with you. Are you? You you're kind of a big deal. And we you, are kind, you we were kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so we we have found what three talismans so far and have brought them back to the keepers and to general sage my god yeah i would say that's incredibly impressive yeah like i said uh so (laughs) i but i can't so does does vlog have a talisman lord orthgard currently has two talisman okay but vlog himself we as far as we know is not in possession of one no, and if if he were to get it, it would go straight to Lord Orthgard. Okay, he's very loyal. So there's no reason we need to stick around here to get anything from him. We should try to disable that airship and then GTFO. Yeah, it's either <laughs> disable the airship or we need to get back to the rebellion. Yeah, back to uh, <laughs> the rebellion and Bellion, and <laughs> wow, <laughs> I never noticed that before. The bellion and bellion. <laughs> We need to return to Bellion and warn the the rest of the keepers that they may be in danger, that their whereabouts are known now. So okay. um, we, it's a very precarious situation that we find ourselves in. And uh, at that moment, as you're talking, you hear an electronic lock uh, unlock 
and the door opens to the prison area and three guards walk in and they look at you very briefly but then head over to what you assume is Shale and Hans's cell next to you and they go and ready the electric spears that they carry and one of them unlocks the cell next to you and he says Shale and Hans you need to come with me Lord Orthgard wants to see you personally. He has plans for you. And he opens the door and you hear Shale start yelling at them and resisting. But then you hear the electronic spears hit and electrocute something. And you hear Shale go silent. And then you see the three men walk out of the cell. And they're holding Shale and Hans and they're both limp. And they take them out of the cell area and away out of view god damn you gotta get out of here you wanna try uh, to bend, bend those bars orc I could <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty uh, beefy I I remember it's something from Shanghai noon or night <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh, is it like twisting wet, the towel? Yeah. Who wet drank a lot of water before yeah. this? Yeah, <laughs> wet silk doesn't break. Yeah, <laughs> you said wet silk doesn't break, not p- piss rope, <laughs> piss, bars. piss cloth, bend bars, <laughs> <laughs> shirt, bend bars. We are wearing burlap clothes. So if we take off our cloaks, <laughs> <laughs> the problem is you guys don't have the wooden stick to yeah. stick through it. Ah, true. Uh, okay. Can I go up to the bars and see how close together they are, and just see if I can like slip through them? <laughs> they're they're how close small enough. Am I? <laughs> they're close enough that you can't slip through. A perfect okay. undersight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just walks out. Like, I would be I would be remiss if I didn't check. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess I'll try to bend the bars. I'm gonna rage. Oh shit! <laughs> that's right. Okay. Yeah. So roll a. Uh, a strength check. All right. How many times can you rage a day? Three? I can rage three times every time I've had a long rest. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Whoa. First one is a 23. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Second one's a 19. Okay. So you go up and try and bend the bars, and you feel them move just a little bit but you're not able to bend them in any significant way. Mm. Well, they're budging a little bit, boys. I can't can't quite get it. Mm-hmm. At this point, I want you all to roll a perception check. Okay. 17. Also 17. Five. So Orc and Yenry, as... Orc is trying to bend the bars. You hear um, some very small sounds coming from behind you. Small sounds? Yeah. Like, it It sounds like someone speaking very quietly. Who's there? Is it the toilet? <laughs> I put my ear to the toilet hole. <laughs> <laughs> you put your ear to the toilet hole and you hear... Hello, is anyone there? <laughs> yes? I knew the toilet was going to be something. He- hello? And uh, you're looking down the toilet and suddenly see a little mouse head pop up. <laughs> and you recognize Miles. Miles? <laughs> oh, my God. Miles, I've never been so happy to see someone in my life. It's like, well, look at you, sorry lot. All Wait, trapped in this prison here. How are we talking to each other? <laughs> the the mage gave us the potion originally, and we can talk to each other permanently. Oh, forever? Oh, permanently? Okay. Whoa. I thought it wore off. Sweet. No, no. He's a very powerful mage mouse. How did you know we were here? It's like, I told you before, the mice have eyes all over the city. I had heard that you had tried to infiltrate the Rectron facility, so we had some of our men stake out the area to make sure that you were okay. Turns out, this isn't the best situation for you. Yeah, we're not no. okay. I promise. <laughs> It's like, well, I feel like we should find some way to nice. release you from your shackles here. Yes, yeah. 
Oh my gosh, thank you so much for coming to find us. It's like, no problem. You guys did so much for Mouse Kingdom. It is the very least that I can do. It's like being the inventor I am, I think that these electronic locks, I, I should be able to make quick work of them. But after that, I'm, I am but a small mouse. I don't know how much I can help. That's okay. I mean, the, this door is the only thing stopping us from, from taking well, on the rest of this facility. So This door and that other door. Two, yeah. Two doors. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, yes. It's like, there appear to be key card doors all over this place. Well, let me see what I can do here. And you see him jump out of the toilet and he scurries across the floor and up the bars <laughs> and <laughs> to the the key card holder. And you see him start pulling some little tools out of his belt and he puts a little metal rod inside the cover and it pops off and there's all these wires and you see him start to work there and he says oh my my this technology is quite advanced more, more advanced than i've seen for most other human technologies it's like this could be a little difficult and he starts working around in there for a minute and you hear him just go ah yes here it is and suddenly the light on the little keypad goes out and you hear the door to your prison unlock. Yes. Nice. Well done, Miles. Like, well, try it out. Did we open it up? <laughs> All right. So you walk over and the door is unlocked and you're able to open it and push into the uh, the main room of the prison. Yes. All right. So now there's going to be guards on the other side of that other door. Yeah, let's go check out those lockers. There might be something useful in there. Okay. Cost, like, so yeah. you run down to the lockers, and there appear to be electronic locks on them as well. And Miles runs over with you, and he opens one up and unlocks it. And the locker opens, and Yenry, you see your equipment in there. Yes. Okay. Sweet. Grab all my stuff. All right. Yeah, and you have it. And then Miles uh, I assume makes that our key cards aren't in our stuff. No, you you search your pockets and you don't see the key cards. Okay. Um, and then he makes work of a few other locks. A few of them are empty, but then Orc and Puff, you find your stuff inside as well. Dope. Strap up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Miles Miles is sitting there on one of the locks on the lock, and he looks at you. He's like, "All right, boys, what's the plan?" Well, all right. Feel so like on the other side of that door, there's guards and there's an alarm. Yes. So, Screezy? <laughs> Screezy? <laughs> was your weasel in the locker? I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where else he'd be. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we need to, I guess, take out those guards and definitely keep them from pushing the alarm button this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe even disable the alarms. Yeah. Who is this Screezy you speak of? Ah. Oh. I think you need to meet Screezy. <laughs> I pull Screezy out of my pocket. And Miles looks uncomfortable as he's <laughs> looking at this thing. He's like, my, what what abomination is this? He, he's he, our he, abomination. <laughs> he's a he's cyborg. Screezy. Oh, this is I didn't troubling. do this to him, just so you know. I was gifted. He was gifted to me th this way. <laughs> He's a rescue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a rescue. <laughs> if I pull, if I pull the crystal, I'm afraid what will happen. So this is him. Yeah. This is Screezy. <laughs> it's like all right then. I think we might need to open that door. And Miles, if you can be quick enough to run to that alarm on the side of the wall out there and disable it, or keep them from being able to press it, um, and then we can try to conk the two guards maybe maybe coconut head <laughs> <laughs> oh i love coconut take heads. them out <laughs> we don't even know how oh, many oh, guards are out there though do we no Wait, last, I got last time there were two but i got i got a good uh this i feel like this is what tom cruise would do that's a good start uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's have two of us in the jail cell and we'll stuff some stuff in one of the other bedrolls to look like all three of us are in there. The third person hide. Like, maybe can we hide behind the door as it opens? 
Are they sliding doors? Or are they? They um, they're regular opening doors. Perfect. Like does it hinge, open so. inwards? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, does it open inwards? <laughs> it opens inward. It's uh, it's full like fire protocol throughout this building. <laughs> All right. So is that fire protocol? No, no, no. <laughs> that seems like not fire protocol. <laughs> Sorry, it's not fire protocol. <laughs> yeah, you know, because when you're trapped in a room, you want to be able to open the door towards But it is you. the yeah. prison cell. <laughs> yeah. They don't want people yeah. getting out. Let the prison is burned. It's, it's different for prison facilities. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. Uh, and then we'll, we should make a commotion so they want it, they come in here. We'll have the door closed, but they don't know it's actually unlocked. And then we can do the classic, like, look up to our door and we'll boom bang it open third Wreck person attack from behind take him out okay i like it Do what it sort up. of what sort of commotion you want to make fake Third's argument excuse. like in road to uh, el dorado i would say someone's <laughs> someone's you dying. gave me loaded dice yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's lift that <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay i can just fake a tummy ache and then hope, ask to go to the nurse. Yeah, we're going to say someone's, <laughs> someone's sick. They're a pretty compassionate bunch. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's such a Yenry thing. Oh, yeah. no, you I have a tummy, a tummy ache? <laughs> oh. My tummy hurts. <laughs> you need yeah. a rub rub on your tum tum? Yes. <laughs> from a licensed professional. <laughs> I feel like Yenry could do some great puppy dog guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm adorable. <laughs> Can I get a... All right, we need to hide our weapons somewhere accessible. Mm-hmm. I'll put them under under my bedroll, yeah. or mine under my bedroll, at least. I'll keep mine... I think I, I'll, I'll go behind the door, because, Orica, you're not going to pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> Too big? <All> right. <laughs> the door opens like a quarter of the way and then hits something. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh... I forgot we had spells now, too. That's, yeah. that's oh, a that's game right. changer. See? And I've got my brightness pebble again, too. That's All cool. right. So we hide our weapons and stuff. We get ready. Can yeah, I? And there's hay on the ground. We can just like toss hay over some of the weapons, too. Yeah. Can I grab like a rock from the cracks in the ground? Um. Yeah, I guess as you have your weapons, you could pry a small stone off. I'm just going to start like banging on the bars. Banging on the bars? Yeah. Okay. So um, roll up. We need help. Check. My friend has a tummy ache. I have bad tummy ache. <laughs> <laughs> this toilet hole's too small. <laughs> it's too small for me. I need to use a real bathroom. Uh, you performance realize Rupert's check. So fancy. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Real performance check. It's not quality. It's quantity. That's Ooh. the issue. <laughs> you. <laughs> That's a t- twenty. A twenty. Okay, so you start just slamming on the bars for a while. So is Puff the one behind the door then? Yeah. Okay, so you start slamming on the bars, and this goes on for a couple minutes, and eventually you hear the electronic lock open on the door, and three guards step in. Um, Two of them have the electric spears, and the other one does not, and they just walk in. And the one without the spear just looks at you and is like, keep it down in there. We don't my, have time for this. My tummy no, hurts. He's in trouble. He needs help. It's like, that is none of our concern. Be quiet. All right, but where I are they need st- medical attention. Where are they standing? They're just standing like three feet away from the bars. Can I brightness pebble? Uh, yeah. All right, I do that. Okay. Oh. Yeah. All right, and it's a constitution saving throw? DC 15, constitution saving throw. All right. So you pull it up, and the two guards with the spears both, like, block their eyes, and when they bring their hands down, you see that their eyes are closed and they can't see. The one in the middle puts his hand down, and he still appears to be able to see you. Get up! I'm going to shut the door. <laughs> All right. And roll initiative. Ugh. 10. 21. 7. Henry gets to go first again. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
So first is going to be Yenry. Okay. Do you say the two that are holding the spears got blinded? Yes. Okay. Um, and so they're blinded for one minute. So that's ten turns, just FYI. Wow. Okay. They are screwed. Um, I'm going to cast Heat Metal on the spear that one of them is holding. Okay. To try to make them drop it so they can't just swing it and try to <laughs> electrocute blindly. Okay, cool. And just to let you know, um, when a creature is blinded, um, mm-hmm. your attack rolls have advantage and their attack rolls have disadvantage. Hmm. Cool. Uh, so he immediately takes 2d8 fire damage. And then Ooh. Uh, if he's holding or wearing the object, um, he must succeed on a constitution saving throw to... to hold on to it still if he wants to try to hold on to it okay so i'll do the damage and then you can do the constitution saving throw uh dc 14 to see if he holds on to it okay that's nine damage okay and uh you see him grip down on his spear and he doesn't let go okay cool well i can reactivate that each turn now to just do more damage (laughs) yeah that seems way more advantageous yeah (laughs) yeah it's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm not mad. <laughs> All right. Next are the guards. So the two guards with spears are just fumbling around. They can't see what they're doing. Um, and the other guard pulls a sword out and um, he moves towards Orc to try and attack. And he tries to slide his sword through the bars and attack Orc. Um, or is the prison door open? Or is it I still closed? I did not open it yet. Okay, he just tries to throw his hand in and he like slides through the bars and you're able to easily dodge it. Nice. All right, and then next is Puff. Uh, I'm going to use... Is The one who's holding the sword now, is that the one who wasn't blinded? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to use Reduce on him. Okay. <laughs> and make him half size guard. <laughs> uh, okay, so constitution saving throw on your end. Okay. Uh, I He fails that. Okay, cool. Well, then he is half his size. <laughs> Little All guard. Right. So and you now- see him shrink down with his, his hands like through the bars with the sword, and he shrinks down to be three feet tall. And does he drop the sword? No, he's still holding the sword. The sword shrinks down with him. Oh, it does? Oh. Yeah, everything you're wearing and holding shrinks down as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then he does, like, 1d4 less of damage or something like that, right? He does, yeah. Okay. Cool. And next is going to be Orc, unless you want to move. Oh. Um, nah, I mean, I'll just stay back by the door, I guess. <laughs> okay. All right, All Orc. Right. I'm going to... Double great axe attack. I'll pull my great axe out from under the hay or wherever I put it. And okay. Slam the door open and attack the little guy twice. Okay. Do it. Ah, first one is a 13. Okay. And second one's a 10. Okay. So the <laughs> first one does hit just barely. If you feel like you're about to miss and then you hit him in the shoulder. Nice. And that does 10 damage. Okay. And next is going to be Yenry. Okay. Um, I guess... Wait, did you open the door, Chris? I did. Okay. I actually just had an idea, but it's not my turn. <laughs> you can talk to me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> instead, of, instead of killing these guys, we could just throw them in the cell and have Miles lock it back up. That's true. Well, that might be easier. But- just knock them out. I guess we could just do that after we knock him out. Yeah, throw him in there. <laughs> okay. All right, get him. Continue to get him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll pull out my rapier and uh, just poke the little guard as well. Okay. Huh. It was a one, but I get to re-roll it because I'm lucky. Uh, 19. Yep, that hits. Sweet. Uh... Uh, seven damage. Ooh, look at you. And then I get to reheat the other guy's spear. Nice. Oh, yeah. And do two more D8 of fire damage. Ooh. 
Nine damage to him. All right. Yeah, and he uh, he does not let go of his spear. He's still holding on. Okay. Cool. Idiot. <laughs> uh, so it's going to be the guard's turns next. Uh, so the little guard is looking afraid of Org, and he looks around, and he tries to run away. So uh, Yenri and... Or, or just Orc, you're going to get an attack of opportunity on him. All right. I just do a normal attack? Yep. That's a 15. That hits. Oh, so that's a 14. No, sorry. 18 damage. Yeah. So Dang. you bring your great axe down on him as he turns around to try and flee, and you just bury it in his back, and you see him fall to the ground. Yeah. And he's he's done. The other two guards are just like, they're, they look scared now. They're just bumbling around and can't do anything. Um, and you see them like kneel down on the ground as they hear the shriek of their comrade, and they drop their spears and just hold their hands up in the air. Does that mean we're out of combat? Yes. If- they they've surrendered to you. Okay. Can we search their bodies for some key cards or search them for some key cards while they're blinded? Yep. Yeah, you can. I so roll an investigation check. Fifteen. Okay. You uh you search the pockets of the three of them. The two guards with spears, you don't find anything, but you find a single key card on the dead guard. Okay. A mini key card? A mini key card. <laughs> I guess it would be small right now. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if he dies, I think he just returns to normal size. Yeah, uh, I can. I can let the spell happens. go too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he must be small. <laughs> Sweet. And then can we throw the three of them into the cell? Yeah. So they they pretty willingly like they just have their hands up in the air and they willingly go with you into the cell, um, and you shut the door and. Miles runs up the wall to the electronic lock and he starts pressing some things with his tiny mouse hands and you see it reactivate. Nice. Sweet. Well done, Miles. You are very welcome. Now what? Um, well, let's go out there and maybe try to just disable that alarm to make sure no one can push Mm -hmm. it. Uh, Yeah. And then... I guess. What's our plan of action? Are we going to. Yeah, do we need to try to save Shale and Hans? That would bring us right back to the room where we were just, you know, taken out. The room where it happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where that moment, which shall not be named, (laughs) took place. (laughs) And you, uh, as you guys are talking, you hear um, a sound come over the intercom and a voice follows it that says. All personnel, launch date has been moved up. Please prepare for launch date. And you hear it go silent. Moved up to when? Like now? Yeah. <laughs> That's a very <laughs> ambiguous <laughs> <laughs> announcement. <laughs> you hear it comes like, sorry, I forgot information. It's T minus one hour until launch date. Oh, uh, okay. Well, that okay. gives us some direction. <clears throat> yeah, but do we need to, like, if we have an hour, do we need to rush back and warn the keepers, or are we going to just... No, we need to dis- deactivate the ship. Think so? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the the move. Miles, you don't know anything about this ship they're building, do you? It's like, no, I'm, I have, I'm not really privy to the, the workings of the Rectrons and what they've been creating in here. I'm sorry. You are good at deactivating things, though. (laughs) If you want a small electronic lock is one thing. Uh, A larger (laughs) piece of technology might be a little difficult for me. Okay, fair enough. Well, we could take the robes of the three dudes we just put in there to try to blend in. Yeah, that's a good idea. You three, derobe to enlarge (laughs) the robe, enlarge a robe, (laughs) or just shrink me. So that I don't look like what they're looking for. Mm. Okay. I shrink orc to my size. How, how long does that last? Your, it lasts your for an uh, oh, a minute. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not super useful. That's a little different. <laughs> I don't guess it. <laughs> I'll just go put my immovable rod on top of the ship. <laughs> and it can't take off? Yeah. <laughs> stalled <laughs> you just stick it into like the side of the ship and push the button <laughs> yeah <like>, done so <laughs> did it i mean it's not a bad it idea <laughs> immovable yeah would it rip the ship apart or would it just hold the ship down i guess that's gonna be my plan <laughs> what are you guys gonna do i'm gonna watch that <laughs> yeah. sounds great <laughs> So I guess we should, I mean, first we need to go out of this hallway. I still think it's probably a good idea to deactivate that uh, alarm. Mm-hmm. And then we're yeah. going to need to find our way. Maybe maybe there's a a floor map on the wall somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, well, no, these guys we took robes from. It's like a mall directory. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <thinking>. you are <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, the ship location is right next to the pink barrier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two birds or one curious. stone? Yeah. I really was curious what story you're going to throw yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> Something that's only mall related. I guess I can yeah. go with Orange Julius. I, that somehow still exists, and I've never yeah. been to an Orange Julius in my life. <laughs> yeah, somehow Orange Julius and Dippin' Dots like, survive yeah, right. the 90s. <laughs> yeah, but where are we? These maps always confuse me. Do we go that way? <laughs> they need a you are here. So, you know, when you exit the door to this prison area to the left goes up the stairs into the control room where you fl- uh, you, you flat vlog, uh, fought <laughs> vlog before. Um, and then to the right is a door that leads uh, to an area that you haven't been yet. But forward um, across the hallway from the prison door is another door that opens into like the test facility where they were testing uh, a flying ship before. And then past that is the area where they were creating like 10 or 15 different little flying ships. Yeah, so should we just interrogate these guys that we blinded? Oh, sure. You there. Tell us what you know. Is there a big main ship and a bunch of little ships? I I don't know. I'm just, I'm an underling. I don't have that information. Oh, you must know a little bit. Like there's there's a large room that we're not allowed in. We don't we're not given that information. It's the it's the one next to the large testing facility where they're building all the tiny ships. That's all I know. Next to the pink berry? <laughs> <laughs> no, next to the build a bear. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the build a ship. <laughs> the build a ship workshop. <laughs> Actually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly where it is. All right, I guess should we go in the big room that we yes. haven't been in yet? Yeah. Should we send Screes? Yes. Oh, yeah, let's do it. The Screezy Run, part two. All right. So <laughs> let's, let's go out in the hall and Miles Wait, disable the did, alarm. Did we take their robes? Yes. yes, you're able to take okay. the robes. They're not, and I'm they're not pick like, up... fighting back. Okay. <clears throat> and can I pick up one of the electrical staffs and carry it with me? Oh, that's yeah. a really good idea. Mm-hmm. Sweet. I'm going to take one of those. Yeah, I'll take one too. Yeah, so you now have two two electric spears. Nice. Cool. And now, yeah, I guess let's walk out the main door. And Miles, if you can, disable that button alarm on the wall. Like, ooh, I'll try. <laughs> and you see him... <laughs> Uh, just skitter up the wall and he reaches the box and undoes it and works for a little bit. And he's like, I can't, I can't actually tell if I've disabled or not, but the, the power cord here is, is now, is now cut. So we can only hope. All right. I'm going to push it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't, I, don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I believe in you, Miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only one way to find out. Yeah. All right. Miles, you've been very helpful. Are you going to stick with us or... I don't want to get you in trouble. Like I am, I am quite small. It's like this, this area here could be dangerous for me. But I am, I am at your bidding. Just tell me what you need. Do you want? Do you want to hide in my hair? Like that sounds comfortable. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> and I lift him up to my little pink fro. <laughs> All right, and he just like nestles in there. Put the toilet mouse in your hair. That's right. <laughs> 
Hey, <laughs> wash it later. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's are we going, go. to, going to the big room? Yeah. Send Screezy. Yeah, I pull Screezy okay. out of my pocket. And I put, right, him, I so put him on the ground. Where where are you directing Screezy to? Oh wait, are we are we we're not outside of the large chamber yet, right? You're basically you've exited the prison. You're in a hallway right now where directly across from you is a door that leads into the testing chamber. To the left is a staircase that goes up. To the right is a hallway that you haven't been in yet. Oh, I thought there was another door. Okay. So we probably so want to go left. Let's go to the right. No, left oh. is staircase. Yeah, left is a staircase up to up to <laughs> vlog where we just Sorry. died. <laughs> so yeah, to we'll the go right. right. <laughs> Good idea, Puff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's split up. <laughs> <laughs> Send the screes to the right. Okay. I take screes out of my pocket. I give him a little boop. That's how I turn him on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here comes Here's your boop. Your boop. <laughs> <laughs> boop. And then I put him on the ground and I, I send him off. And I open up my little Screezy uh, tablet. Yeah. And so Screezy gets put on the ground and he starts running down the hallway as you uh, control him. And you run down maybe 20 yards and there's a left turn in the hallway and you turn and go down there. And at the end of that, you see a doorway. Uh, that has a key card lock on it. Which we have, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's just follow the Screeze. Yeah. Yeah. He can he can scout it out, and then we'll just come up behind let's him. Go open the door for Screezy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So you run down the hall after Screezy and come to the door and scan the key card, and you hear it unlock. You want to push through Screezy? Yeah, I feel like we should just crack it and let him go forward. So we crack yeah. the door for Screeze. Okay, you crack the door and Screezy runs out and you're looking at the tablet through uh, Screezy's eyes and you recognize this room. You're basically in the giant like cave atrium that you first came into uh, in the minecart, uh, but you're directly next to that giant magical barrier door that's protecting the inner caves uh, of the mountain from the rest of the mining facility. Uh, to your left, you see the area where the mine carts with all of the supplies are going into that door that opens and closes and then leads into the uh, Build-A-Ship workshop. So you're basically <laughs> on the other side of that tunnel uh, from where you were before when you first entered this atrium and went to that Build-A-Ship workshop. What if we disabled this yeah, barrier and, and let the, the monsters... Beast? Run amok in the Rectron base. Yeah. Oh, shit. I like this idea. Because they would probably destroy a ship. Yeah. Yep. Or Lots at least postpone the launch. I don't think they're yeah. going to be in. <laughs> I guess since we're disguised, we feel like we can just go in there. Yeah. So you, you also see, I mean, things are kind of crazy in there right now. There's people running everywhere, like Rectrons, dwarves, everyone. It seems like everyone's on high alert running to different places. Uh, it's, a, it's a crowd in there for sure. Okay. We could probably blend in then. Yeah. Can we investigate this barrier? Yeah. So you walk out the doors and you see uh, the ballistae that are stationed outside of this magical door. There's people manning them right now. And there's also these like glowing lights that are sort of flashing on and off red around the door. It's like people are on high alert at the door right now. Uh, and roll an investigation check. <laughs> Six. Fifteen. Four. So, Yenri, you're looking at this door and you notice that there is basically this wire that's running up along the perimeter of the cave opening and at the bottom of each side of the cave the wire is connecting to these large crystals that are pressed into these metal electronic setups and they're glowing blue at the bottom and from the wire you see emanating this wall of force that is protecting the cave Guys, I think the uh, the force field is being held together by these contraptions on either end. 
So if we can either remove the crystals or destroy these, I think the whole force field goes down. All right. Where are they? They're like way up. They're at the bottom of each side of the cave, kind of near the ground. And there are like armed guards standing near these crystals. Mm. Of course. Yep. So how far are we from the crystals? About 60 feet from the cave entrance, I would say. And then the cave entrance is about 60 feet wide. It's a big cave entrance. Okay, so we need to try to probably distract or disable these ballistae to make sure that they don't have a fighting chance against whatever's coming out of this cave. Yeah, or against us. Right. And then we need to try to disable this force field. Maybe we can shoot the force field with the ballistae. I mean, the the contraptions. Oh, like take them over and then just shoot the crystals? Yeah, yeah. That, it's true. Maybe we can... We could possibly suggest to them that their shift is up or that, you know, we need more talented ballistae shooters on <laughs> on call right now. Or just <laughs> suggest that they shoot the crystals so we don't oh, get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> that too. This looks like a job for the crotch goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? <laughs> Elton Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't Dylan have suggestion? I do have suggestion, yeah. I well, can there's try two to of them. I guess, can you do it to both of them? It's just a cantrip. Yeah. Well, I mean, mine's a suggestion. Ryan's is a charm person where he's supposed to just basically become friends with them. But, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, we can walk up to the first. <clears throat> Are there multiple people at each balliste, or is it? Uh, there's basically one in each. There's, like, seats attached to yeah. it, and they're able to, like, swivel. So it's basically one person... Uh, using each ballast ballista yeah ballista is that how you say it i've just yeah but been... ballista is plural ballista is singular oh, apparently this is what google said <laughs> <laughs> thanks google mm-hmm. uh okay well then i'll walk up to the nearest ballista mm-hmm. <laughs> and walk by him and i guess cast suggestion okay and so it's a wisdom saving throw i want to make sure so i think like if i'm worried I could also use, like, cutting words and make it so he has an extra good chance of actually doing this. Okay. Um, So, yeah, I will cast Suggestion and walk by him and say, point your weapon at the contraption holding the force field together at the bottom and fire. You need to destroy that contraption. And that's my suggestion. All right, so it's a wisdom saving throw? It is a wisdom saving throw. What's your uh, spell DC? Uh, so my, my DC is 14. Okay, so you walk by him, and you see him like shake his head back and forth and look around and look confused, but he does not change his orientation. Oh, boo. Want to just keep walking and try the other one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. I got multiple spell slots. <laughs> um. I got one more Almost. spell slot to do that. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Although, yeah, this time I could uh, use cutting words as well to make sure that he <laughs> actually falls for it. <laughs> uh, all right, this time I'm going to use suggestion with cutting words and say, hey, everyone thinks you're doing a horrible job here. You need to point that down at the thing at the base of the force field and shoot it to destroy it. Maybe people will like you then. <laughs> <laughs> And then, what does cutting words do? I get like, to I get to subtract a d6 from whatever you rolled to, okay. to do that ability check. And I rolled a 6, so subtract 6 from whatever you rolled, and then gotcha. a dc14. So, you see him, like, kind of look around, he, like, nods his head kind of angrily, and he, like, <laughs> <laughs> points his ballista at the uh, crystal, and he shoots... And you see the giant bolt in this ballista fly through the air and hit the crystal, and it explodes, and it throws the guard that's sitting next to it away from it at, like, ten feet, and you see the wire or the cable that's going around the doorway start to flash a little bit, and a large alarm goes off that sounds like the alarm you heard before when Shale told you that there was a monster at the door, pretty much. 
Whoa. So it, that crystal is destroyed? Yeah. And you see the it's like shaking a little bit, the, uh, the wall of force. And you see everybody start to go a little bit crazy in the room there as they kind of, as they realize what's happening um and things just get thrown into chaos people are running amok uh people run over to the guard that was thrown away the other guard at the other crystal is standing ready um the man at the other ballista like points his uh weapon at the doorway again uh like ready but people seem to be confused right now and how's the guy that shot the crystal reacting? <laughs> he looks he looks proud of himself. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I'll show you. I'll show I'll you show all. that. I'll show. <laughs> How you like me now? <laughs> um, can I use Mage Hand to just pull the trigger on one of the other ballista to just make it fire so they are unloaded? Yeah, the other ballista is pointed just at the shimmering wall of force right now. Yeah. I feel like we need to take it over and kill the other crystal. I have, I could run over, can I run within 30 feet of the other crystal? Yes. All right, because I, I could do that and then I could use enlarge on the crystal, which if it's set in some sort of thing that's like taking energy from it, that's got to bust it. Hmm. Oh, because huh. if it enlarges twice its size, it's going to wreck whatever's attached to it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I guess so. I mean, you, Eric, you described it like it has, like, it's something's, like, it's, holding it's onto like it. It's, like, inset into, like, a mechanical contraption. Yeah. Yes. So I would like to run within 30 feet and then cast enlarge on the crystal. Okay. So you run over there in your cloak and you raise your hands up. And you see the crystal grow in size and it breaks the barriers of the mechanical contraption that it's in. And you see sparks fly everywhere and the contraption explodes, shattering the crystal and throwing the other guard away. And you see the entire wall of force uh, like disappear and, and vanish in front of your eyes. And the siren is still going and you hear shrieks from in... The, the main atrium of the cave as people realize that the defenses are down. Uh, and <laughs> you hear a second alarm go off that's even louder and higher pitched at this point. And from inside the cave, you start hearing some large growling noises. I think that's our cue to leave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I am going to use Mage Hand to pull the trigger on the ballista to just waste his ammo so that they have to take the time to reload. <laughs> Is it a, Was it a physical bolt or was it just a beam of energy? Uh, it's a physical bolt. Oh, okay. It's a submachine ballista. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. <laughs> but yeah, can I just use Mage Hand to pull the trigger and just send it off so I just waste his ammo? Sounds perfect. So you, your mage hand floats over there and you pull the lever next to the driver of this ballista and you see the bolt just fly off into the cave into the darkness and you hear a giant scream from inside of that cavern <laughs> that just reverberates through the entire cave and then goes silent and then you hear some giant footsteps and you see a giant troll walk out and he has the bolt stuck in his chest and this thing is 45 feet tall and he rips the bolt out of his chest and screams into the atrium and he has this giant bat and he starts walking forward and just slams the ballista uh, in front of him and it shatters throwing wood everywhere and the chaos just grows greater in the area as people realize that the defenses are completely gone and there's monsters starting to pour into the atrium. <laughs> oh. Time to go. You oh, made him yeah. angry, Henry. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think you'd have that good of aim to hit the troll. It's like <laughs> in the dark, but we, we better get out of here. Uh, yeah, run. Run. Yeah. <laughs> get off the roof. Get off the roof. Run. Get off the roof. Burn, 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 burn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, where to? Uh, I think the only exit I know of is back through the, the steakhouse. Are we leaving Shale and Hans? Yeah. 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 Oh. I feel like Vlog is going to have to let down his guard 
to come deal with these trolls yeah. and 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 pay less attention to shale and hans our whole purpose of coming here was to get them i feel like we have to get them out of here yeah i guess so i mean do we even know where they I are mean, our whole purpose was to get intel but now that i feel like they won't be launching we need to also warn the keepers now why do you say they won't be launching we don't know that yeah we don't know that i just assume that with everything that's going on they're not going to launch right now but it might I guess pressure the troll, them to launch sooner. I guess the troll's contained in this one cave right now. Yeah, so maybe we just need to go sabotage everything while chaos is happening. Yeah. All right. So should we go back towards the uh, test chamber? I mean, should we lure the troll towards the <laughs> where the ship is? Come here, troll. Come here. <laughs> yeah, is there, is there a big door into the other cave? There is a fairly large door that's opening and closing and letting mine carts in. But since the troll came in, the like mine cart shipments have stopped going across the platform there. So the doors are no longer opening to let these mine carts in. Hmm. So so do do we or do we not know right now where the ship that they're talking about is, the large one? We don't, right? I don't know where it is. Okay. I just want to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Yeah. I feel like I remember there being another large door in the other cave. Yeah, so in the Build-A-Ship workshop, on the <laughs> far side of that room, like across from the doors that are opening and closing and letting the mine carts in, there were huge double doors that were locked closed um, that were leading into another room. And from the control room, you could also see through the window into this giant room where there were, like, cables coming down from the ceiling, and there were dwarfs in there on floating platforms that were, like, moving up and down. Oh, I thought that was the test chamber. Like okay. a silo for Yeah, like launching. a silo, sort of, or like a, a giant yeah. hangar. Can you suggest if this troll understands what you're saying to him? <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to smash. <laughs> I think he's already preparing to smash. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to use enlarge on the troll. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Mega troll. <laughs> Can you use enlarge on, like, anything? Like, is there a limit to the size of it? Not that I know of. <laughs> Shit. I use reduce on the world. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't say there's a. a oh, it just limit. says a creature or object you can see within range. That do really you have to shake things up. Do you have to <laughs> touch things to do reduce or enlarge? It's a thirty foot so. range. Thirty foot oh. range. Nice. How how tall is this troll? Forty five feet. Uh, right now. He's like forty five feet. Okay, that's already a pretty big troll. Yeah, yep. true. I probably don't need to do that. Might be overkill. All right. Well, I. Seems like we probably just let the troll run amok and we go find the ship, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it seems like they got him distracted here, and hopefully that'll pull the attention of most of the people. So we want to go through the build a shop? Build a yeah, I don't... ship? Shop? <laughs> build a shop <laughs> workshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. Because that, does that lead to the silo? Room? It yeah. does. He said that mm-hmm. does, and then also the control room looks over it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go fight Vlog again. No, either. not really. <laughs> I don't feel like getting frog kissed and eating <laughs> <laughs> toad kissed. Okay, then yeah, let's do it. Let's go through the workshop. Okay, so you guys run away and backtrack through the door uh, that you just came through and run down the hallway to the prison. And now you're standing with the prison door on your left and the workshop door on your right. So you open up the workshop door and look in, and there's no one in there. It seems whatever was being tested in there was abandoned. Uh, There there doesn't appear to be anyone here. No ships? So there's a ship that is in pieces in the middle of the floor. And there's scorch marks around the room and other other rubble. Uh, so you're able to make your way across this room to the other door that opens up into the Build-A-Ship workshop. All right, okay. what's in there? When you <laughs> open the door, you look out and 
you see that most of the ships that were there before are gone now. There's some ships that are still incomplete, uh, but there's dwarves running around just in chaos. There's a few that are trying to like work on things like really frantically on some of the ships, uh, but most of them appear to be gone. And when you open the door to this area, you hear another announcement come over the facility and it says, Flight personnel report to the crater rim. At this moment, launch is being moved up. We have 30 minutes until launch. And uh, it goes silent. Uh, can I run up to one of the dwarves and ask him how we get into the silo or the hangar? Uh, you can try. Yeah, that's what I want to do. All right, so you walk up to the, one of the dwarves and you you ask him and... This old dwarf just looks at you and his eyes look crazy with fear. He's just like, what are you talking about, man? Everything's gone to shit. It's like, we gotta, we gotta evacuate. It's like, we don't know that. We're just the ship workers. And he uh, just looks back at the ship. Aren't we still launching? He's like, we're just the mechanics. <laughs> All right. Nobody around here knows anything. Where are the ships you're mechanicking? <laughs> He's like, they, they took all the ships into the hangar. Yeah, how'd they get there? <laughs> it's like, they were transported earlier today. Is there another door in this room? There's the big uh, door, right? There's the big door with the minecart that's opening up, or not opening up anymore, but was opening up to let minecarts in. And then on the far left side of the room, you see the giant double doors that lead into the silo that you saw before. And then there's also the small door next to the minecart door, which is the one that you originally came into when you first entered this whole facility. But there aren't any other smaller doors next to the giant silo door? No, no more smaller doors. Okay. Well, we just got to go somehow get that to open? Guess so. Because the only other place we could go would be the control room. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Can we see from here, is there... Any sort of like key card pad for that the giant double doors? Uh, you walk up to the giant double doors, and these this this thing's like sixty feet tall and sixty feet wide. These are giant sliding steel doors. Uh, there doesn't appear to be a key card on it, or like anywhere near it, I should say. Okay, I guess. Do we need to just go to the control room again? I feel like guess we're not. so. Miles, any thoughts on how to get this open? Like, this this is a very large mechanical contraption. I think you may be right that there might be something in the control room. I I could try and investigate myself if you if you want me to. The control room? Yes. Like, go there by yourself? It's like, I'm very small. I wouldn't be noticed. All sure. right. Okay. You want to like, take Squeezy with you? <laughs> Miles maybe. in the Squeeze. <laughs> if I, I don't know the way, you might have to guide me there. If you could, I could ride Squeezy. Up there, oh, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please take a selfie while you're on there though, if you're gonna do that. <laughs> you <gotta> post that. <laughs> All right. All right, mount the screes. Okay. So and just letting you guys know you're gonna have to open the doors for him through the testing room in order for him to get to the staircase. So you're able to run through the chaos and open the doors for him. And he mounts Screezy and Screezy runs down that hallway to the right up the stairs. And he slinks all the way up to the top of the staircase. And you're looking at on your tablet as he comes into the room. And you see through the tablet that Vlog is in there. And there's maybe 15 guards around him that are surrounding the control panels and he's screaming at people and there's alarms going off and lights flashing and you see miles jump off screezy and he runs across the floor and you see him climb up onto one of the control panels and he's like looking at vlog from the corner uh waiting to see what he's saying and looking at and then you see him scurry down the control panels as he's he's looking at things and he eventually comes to an area where there is like a giant red button underneath a piece of glass that's sitting in the middle of the control panel array. And he runs back to Screezy and he looks in Screezy's eyes and he's like holding Screezy's head and he's like yelling at you through Screezy. He's like, I think I found it. There's a very large button that says hangar doors. It's like, I I believe this is it. Um, 
I, it's underneath a piece of glass. It's too large for me to press. Boy, um, oh boy. <laughs> uh, how far would it be from on the ground below the control room to up in the control room? Like where we are. May, maybe 20 feet. So my mage hand can reach 30 feet. So could I, okay. through Screezy's eyes, create my mage hand and try to lift up the, the glass container and push the button? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I'll use mage hand and try to do it. Okay. Boom. Let's do that. <laughs> so roll a stealth check. Okay. Or a slight sleight of hand check. Let's do that. Okay. Sleight of mage hand. Is mage hand visible? No, no, it's invisible, but... It's a 13. Okay. So you go over there and you're able to um, lift the glass, but you're like having a hard time steering this mage hand by using just Screezy's eyes. Miles, I got the glass off. Are you able to push the button? It's like, I'll run over there and try. And you see him disappear off into the distance and he runs up the control panel and you see through Screezy's eyes that he is standing on the button and you see him leap up into the air and fall down on the button and he presses it and you see in front of you the giant steel doors. There's a, a plume of steam or smoke that emits from the crack and the doors slowly start to open. And at that moment too, you see a guard looking at Miles and he swats him off of the button no. and you lose sight of him. Rod Miles. Miles. Oh. And you don't you don't see Miles return to Screezy. Oh god. I hope it's uh. okay. But we got to make this worth it. We got to go. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I got to get Screezy back. Screezy, come back. Come home, Screezy. And Screezy runs out of the room and back down. I scoop him, put him in my pocket. And we, we quickly run, through, run through the door, the crack. Yeah. So you you run in through the crack of the door, and you are now standing in a giant open hangar. And you look out, and this room appears to be empty. There's scraps of like metal and stone laying everywhere. And you look up towards the ceiling, and there's these cables hanging down. But it's just like dark cave ceiling. There's some pieces of metals that you can see like implanted in the ceiling. Um, but this giant room appears to be empty right now. And there's no like big hall leading anywhere else or anything? At the end of this hallway, you see another set of large double doors that are open. Um, and you can't see into it from here. But it's open? Yeah. All right, let's go. Yeah. Okay, so you, you sprint down the hangar past all these scraps that are laying on the ground and to that area, and you come out into another large cave that has a giant river running through it, and there's an enormous waterfall um, at the far side of the room, and there's some people there, and you see two or three f little flying ships that are hovering into the air and they race off into the waterfall and like break the plane of the water and disappear behind the waterfall. And as you're standing there, the last two little floating ships go and they force their way through the waterfall and disappear. Need to follow hey. all those ships. Yeah, I guess so. I really do thought we... there would just be a big ship behind those doors. But I, I yeah, like, same. do we think that that's where the big ship will be or if that's just like their exit to like get outside for the small ship. I don't know where else the big ship could have gone. Do we just have to run through the waterfall and see where he it said it's us? like they went. So we're not standing on top of the waterfall. The waterfall's in front of us and they went through yep, the water. There's like a river. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Do we need to like go back and get a ship from the dwarves that we're still working? I think weren't he said there weren't even any. Broken? Yeah, there were. Yeah. It was like half ships. Yeah. Did Eric? Did it look like any of the ships back there were close to being finished? Yeah, I would say the the few that were being worked on frantically by the doors were were close to being finished. Oh, gotcha. Let's run all the way back. <laughs> Hopefully, they didn't close the hangar doors yet. <laughs> all 
All right. You you sprint back through the caves and you make your way back to where the dwarves were. And there's one standing there and he has like a tablet and he's hooking wires into one of the ships and doing what looks like diagnostic checks or something like that. Is the ship almost ready? He's like, I've I've got it as close as I'm going to get it. All right. We're going to take it. And I don't know how this works, but I have ship's passage, which I can secure <laughs> free passage on any ship. <laughs> I think Sweet. that tracks. Yeah, <laughs> free passage. It just mm-hmm. says secure free passage on any ship. Oh, good. Because okay. normally it has a little coin slot and takes fifty <laughs> cents. So <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, in case he puts up a fight, he's like, yeah. this isn't your ship. <laughs> mm-hmm. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> so he he's like frightened. So he just takes you at your word. He says like. All right, if it crashes, it's not my fault. And he just, like, scurries away. Um, and so roll a vehicle check. Vehicle check? Uh, orc. I think that's just, like, it's just kind of a, a general D20 thing, but you're, like, proficient in vehicles, I think, right? Uh, water vehicles. I'm going to give you the proficiency on this. All right. It's a it's a fluid-based um, ship. <laughs> It's just like sailing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, 17. Okay. So you look at this thing and you, you think like, yeah, I can figure this out. And so oh, yeah. there's an area on the back that's this black square panel and you put your hand on it and the steel top, of the, the, the ship looks like a rock on the bottom, like, like smooth, more or less smooth stone. And then the top is the steel dome. So kind of like a flying saucer with a stone bottom. And you put your hand on the back and the metal part of this thing opens up and there is a big seat in the middle with this uh, control panel in front of it. And it looks like it could fit the three of you because Puff and Yenri, you're small. Uh, So you're able to climb in there and there's another similar black panel in front of you that has like two square hand areas and you're able to put your hands on that and the door closes on top of you guys and suddenly it's pitch black in there but you then see materialize in front of you like a window to the outside it's this like magical shimmering uh viewport into the outside world so you're able to see uh your surroundings through the steel of this ship nice it's gotta be weird, like we're just floating in mid midair. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> All right, Ort, punch it. Yeah. Am I chewy? Punch it, Chewy. <laughs> <laughs> and you uh concentrate really hard and you feel the ship rise into the air and you feel that you have full control over its movement. <laughs> and I punch it forward. All right, and you go racing through the double doors of the hangar and through the the large area of the hangar back towards the waterfall. And through the waterfall. Yeah, and when you get to that room, you do a sharp 90-degree turn and then you race off through the waterfall. And when you break the plane of the waterfall, you're now fully submerged in this, like, cylinder of water. It's basically a cave that's running through the mountain and you're, you're fully submerged in this rushing area of water. And you twist and turn through this cavern system. And eventually you fly out into like this big lake. So you look around you and it's just dark water now. Um, And you don't see any caves, but around you, you see all these other floating ships. In the water? In the water, yeah. And there's, there's hundreds of them. Do we Jesus. see a large ship? Um, it's too dark right now to see. You don't really have any visibility. There's like a light blue glow that each of the ships is giving off. So you can see this array of lights, um, but it, they all look fairly similar. Can I start going up, like towards what I assume is the surface? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you're you start moving up and you start to see light above you as you're rising up, like you're, you're reaching the surface of the water. Um, and 
all of a sudden you break through the plane of water with a splash and you are hovering over the water that is sitting on the inside of the crater that sits above Vanguard. Hmm. Are there any other ships that are above the water right now? No, they're all underneath. We've got lightning spears. We can just poke the water and hope that it electrifies. Zap them all. <laughs> I think that's probably true. Shoot got fish a in a barrel. Yeah. Big battery. And a... <laughs> they all float belly up to the surface. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as you guys are sitting here, you hear over the intercom uh, that's inside your ship. It says, all ships prepare for launch. One minute until launch. Oh. Oh, no. Can we look around near the rim, the crater rim of the lake, and see sort of what it's made of? Is this a pretty broad incline? Is there any way we could cause a collapse and avalanche? It's a thing? it's a big crater. I mean, it's probably a mile across. Oh, God. Like, it's a, it's a very large crater. Um, but you rise up a little bit to see your surroundings... And you notice there's a bunch of people starting to congregate on the edge of the crater. And you remember that right now is basically night of the third day of the Festival of Light. So people are marching up for the giant light show at the end of the festival that takes place at the crater. And Salamander Man. And right? Salamander Man. Wait, are the... Are the Rectrons really just, like, making a big floating stage for Salamander Man? This is all part of the festival. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a drone light show. Yeah. <laughs> He's, they're his tech crew. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, and you're, you're seeing a bunch of those, like, flying birds uh, surrounding the people. There's a bunch of lights going off at the crater, and you can still hear some, some music at this point as, as the crowd gets larger and larger. Boy. I feel like there's a lot of potential for casualties. <laughs> I guess we're Rectrons now. <laughs> yep. Yeah, We've switched sides before. Yeah, yeah that'd be a lot easier <laughs> yeah. if we just decided to become Rectrons. <laughs> yeah, then it means that we're winning. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, you're, you're sitting there and you can see some fireworks starting to go off and the music starting to get louder the the capital building of vanguard that's sitting on the edge of the crater is like silhouetted behind these these giant fireworks that are starting to go off do we still think there's a big ship i don't remember why we assumed that in the first place I don't but know. is it there's a yeah you've been told there's a fortress a flying fortress okay are we still going to try to disable this big fortress or are we going to try to go warn the keepers por qué no los dos <laughs> Yeah, you want to disable it first and then fly off? Yeah, if we can find it. I don't even know where the airship is. Well, I'm assuming I mean, in a minute it's going to come out of this yeah. <laughs> crater. We'll see. Yeah. But it's kind of us against like a hundred ships and a fortress. Yep. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Should we just hang out nearby till the launch? Or we can dive and just start peeling across the water and seeing if we can find the big ship, but... All right. Yeah, let's dive. Sure, let's do that. I have dark vision up to 60 feet. So let's start exploring this mile wide. I assume it's probably just in the middle. It has to be in like the deepest part. So yeah, can we just start like careening towards the middle of the lake? Are you underwater or over water? We're going to dive back into the water okay. in, the, in the middle and just dive straight down. Okay. So you do that and you start racing through the water and you're passing a bunch of these other little glowing ships in the water and you beeline for a while, but you're not seeing anything other than the smaller glowing ships inside the crater. Are they all going to like Megatron together? Is that <laughs> what, not Megatron. Voltron. <laughs> Voltron. <laughs> Voltron. <laughs> so as you reach the inner part of this crater, your inner calm comes up again and it says, all ships surface, all ships surface. And you see around you all of the lights of the ships starting to rise up through the water. And a bunch of them start breaking the plane of the lake and rising up into the air uh, above the crater. All right, let's go surface. 
wait for this big ship. So you you race through the water and you rise up and you're now sitting in the air with all of these other ships that are glowing blue uh, in the night sky and you can hear a roar of cheers from the people who are standing on the side of the crater and the ships are just flying around in circles and I mean it appears to be a form of a light show Um, and they're just spinning in circles around the crater but then you see them all stop all at once and you start to feel this oppressiveness enter your mind and the whole world just goes silent around you and the lights that are rimming the lines of the crater all go dark and all the ships go dark and all of a sudden you see a bunch of lights turn on and illuminate the capitol building that's sitting on the side of the crater and you feel inside of your mind this booming voice this voice that just feels like darkness incarnate and it sort of envelops you and you hear it rattle inside your brains and it starts to speak and it says loyal citizens of Mardinia the world we know is changing great forces from the past have resurfaced promising to usher in a new era of prosperity and stability for far too long our lands have been plagued by dark creatures both human and monster in form i speak to you with the promise of a life without these fears without the hardships that make mortal lives twist and turmoil in pain i can liberate you from these shackles of suffering i lord orthgard can be your salvation by bringing forth the next era of enlightenment However, there are those among us who wish to keep us in darkness. The organization known as the Keepers is the obstacle that we must all fight in order to allow the sun to rise over our new world order. But fear not. The Keepers have made a grave error. The cowards have been hiding themselves, fighting from the shadows. But we can see them now, and we shall eliminate them for the good of all mankind. My citizens, the new dawn is coming, and we shall all bask in its glory. And as he finishes saying that, you hear this deep rumbling from inside the earth, and you see the Capitol building start to shake, and a huge chunk of the city of Vanguard with the Capitol building starts rising up from the side of the crater. And you hear screams and yells as the city rises up into the sky and stones are falling from the bottom. And the bottom is glowing blue and the giant floating rock city rises up into the air to join the other small ships. And it starts floating off into the distance. 